when you are working in this class, we expect you to create documentation for yourself on how to do things. And this is a good habit to get into for programming because you want to start from the beginning by making yourself a reference and examples. And it's important for you to know where the different coordinates are and how different things work. So you'll notice that I have a functions, or I could rename this, programming notes. And I can break it down by what sort of thing that I'm doing. I can have multiple pages. In the Getting Started with Processing book, I'm working with their samples, triangle, quadrilateral, and I'm actually using processing to create an example for myself. Now, sometimes it's a good idea if you have a complex shape to draw it out before you begin. I'd usually do this on draft paper, but for something this simple, your other option is just to sort of play with it as you go. So I'll take an example. I've already done a triangle, so I'm going to do this one. And I always start by giving myself some notes. So quadrilateral, it's a squarish. It can be a square. A square is a format of it, but not all um, quadrilaterals are square. That could also be a rectangle. And then I, that it, I need to know that I'm putting in the corners. Quad is x1, y1, x2, y2, x2, I'm sorry, x3, y3, x4, y4. And this is going to become my notes on how to program. You'll notice that these slashed lines here make this a comment. It's not read by the program. These are just notes to myself. Now then I'm going to try creating one. First, I need to set the size of my screen, and I'm going to set that to a 400 by 400 square. And if you haven't done this before, for, you can test after each line. So that sets up my basic square here. And I'm going to set up my, I'm going to make a square inside of my square. And then I'm going to play with it a little, show you how the cha everything changes. So the command for that is quad, and we're going to just set it up at 20, 20. And it always starts in the top left hand corner. So 20, 20 should make your x1 right here. Actually, it'd be right here. 20, 20, figuring each of these are 10. And so if I wanted to go over, say, um, we'll say 100 points, that we'd be coming out to the right. So x is across the top. So the next one, if I'm coming out 100, would be 120. I'm at the same y value, 20. Then we have to drop down to x3. I'm working my way around in a circle. So I'm going to want that to be at 120. 120, and then I'm going to go back to my last one, which is going to need to be 20, 120. And we'll see if I got that right. No big deal. It's not a lot of effort to change it if I'm wrong. Oops, forgot my semicolon. I'll tell you, unexpected token null. Let's try that again. And there we go. I have a nice little square. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a picture of this. And I like to do it side by side. So here's my code, here's my results. I love Jing. I'm going to take a nice little snapshot here. And then I'm going to capture the image and I'm going to take some notes right on it. This helps me because I need to know that this is x1, y1, and then I'll move that so it's just sitting right here at the corner. And I want to know that this is x2, y2, because it's important to know which order it's drawing these sometimes. So I want to know which point is which. x3, y3 and x4 
y4. So that lets me know where each of these points relate to. And it shows me the code here. So I can copy this. I can go over into OneNote. And I can put it right in here. And it ha shows me how to do it. So these are my own programming notes on each of the different functions that we're working with in the first chapter. And as you're going through the chapter, you should be making notes on all of these. You don't necessarily have to do a picture if you don't want to. Your other option would be to put in, you could always draw these if you wanted to. So I could use my line here for the triangle. I've got that as yellow. Um, but then I would want to annotate that, which is a little harder. And I could do x1, y1, click here for space over, x2, y2. x3, y3, and you'll see that matches what I've done here, going in that range around. Um, that can show you where they're at as well. You pick the method that you want to for um, taking notes, but I'm going to expect to see programming notes, and for each subject that you learn in the book, there should be a page that goes along with it of all of your programming notes so you have documentation for yourself. We'll also have another section which will be our homework because you're going to hand this in and you can put notes on your homework. You're going to copy and paste your program in and then you're going to paste a picture of the screenshot of the finished homework once you publish it. And we're going to be collecting this every four weeks. This is going to end up being a quarter of your grade. We want you to learn how important it is to do documentation when you're doing programming, both on the language itself and anything that you learn when you're doing your programming, and on each piece of code that you have. There are two types of documentation. There's the internal documentation that we're doing here, which involves commenting your code well. Every program you write will be expected to have at least a couple of comments in it, and I will show you that when we get to the first programming assignment. But right from the beginning, I'm going to expect you to be keeping a notebook in one note that you will hand in every four weeks.